If you're a beginner to mid journey or not used it before, I have 21 tips and tricks to help you create stunning images. I've read the user guide so you don't have to, so let's get straight into it. Tip one, find generated images. One mistake I was making when I generated images in one of the newbie rooms was that I kept losing the image amongst all the new images that were created. I found myself scrolling up and down to find it. All I had to do was click on the inbox and then click on mentions. And here you'll find all your generated images. Then if you click on jump, you will go back to your image in the feed where you can upscale and make variations. I wish I knew this earlier, it would have saved me a lot of time. Tip two, you can save your images to your DMs by adding an envelope reaction to your post. So if you click on add reaction and then select the envelope emoji, it will send the image directly to your DMs. You can find your DMs with this icon in the top left hand side. Once you click on it, you'll see the image has been sent here. Tip three get prompt ideas. If you browse to midjourney.com and then click on showcase, you'll be able to see a collection of images and the words they use to generate them. You can bookmark the images you like by hovering over the image, then clicking the three dots here and then clicking bookmark. Now to see your bookmarks, you can click on explore and in the top right, you'll see a tab called bookmarks. If you click on an image, you'll be able to see the full prompt used to generate that image. As you can see, some of the prompts are really short. This is just a two word prompt. Other prompts have more details and it is in these details where you can learn how to create similar images. Tip four, add style cues. If you want to create a specific look, you can add details to the prompts. For example, Pixar style. You could also use styles from famous artists like Picasso or add in the names of famous photographers. Tip five, use an image as a prompt. You can do this by inserting the image URL at the start of the prompt. If you don't have an image URL, you can upload your image to Discord and then use the Discord URL. You do this by clicking or double clicking the plus sign next to the message text box and then uploading your file. Once the image is posted, click the image and then open it in a browser, then copy the image URL from the address bar and paste it into the prompt along with any other details. In this case, I want to turn this image of two bucks into a Pixar style image, and this is what it came up with. Tip six, you can blend images together. Instead of using forward slash imagine, you can use the forward slash blend command to upload two to five images. Midjourney will then work its magic to merge them to generate a new image. I'm going to merge this image of a lion with this picture of a snow hiker. I'll hit enter to send the command and once finished, it gives me this image, which is indeed half man, half lion. Here are the two original images for reference. Following on from this idea is tip seven. You can use emojis as a prompt. Instead of typing words in a prompt or adding an image, which I just showed you, you could use an emoji instead. This single emoji of a smiley face has generated these four random images. You can even go a step further and add multiple emojis to the prompt. Here's a smiley face and a race car emoji. And here is a heart, swan and pizza combined. Tip eight, use collective nouns. According to the Midjourney docs, plural words leave a lot to chance. So you need to be more specific. Three cats is more specific than cats. And collective nouns like flock of birds is better than just birds. Continuing the theme of being specific, tip nine is to add lighting details. You can create photorealistic images by specifying the type of lighting you want. You could say soft lighting, for example, or put in golden hour. You can even add neon lighting, or this image simply has at sunset in the prompt. Tip 10 add camera details. If you include the make a model of a camera, it helps mid journey to generate a photorealistic image. 
So you could put in the camera model, for example, Canon 5D and also the lens used. Now to get an ultra creamy blurred background, tip 11 is to add aperture settings to the prompt. This image has an aperture setting of f1.8 and this image has an aperture setting of 2.8 and as you can see it's slightly less blurry than the previous image. And now this final image, as you can see, they've also put f1.8 in the prompt. Tip 12, create photorealistic wildlife pictures. Simply add National Geographic to the prompt. You could type Snow Leopard National Geographic style or National Geographic photo of two lions during a golden hour. And you'll get this stunning image. The next set of tips relate to parameters that you can add to the end of a prompt. Tip 13, remove objects from images. No helmet doesn't work because it reads helmet and adds it in. To remove the helmet, you need to use the negative parameter dash dash no helmet. As you can see, it gives us this fireman without a helmet. This is a useful one to remember in the future if your images produce an object that you don't want to be there. Tip 14, change aspect ratio. By default, Midjourney generates square images. If you want a different aspect ratio, you can add dash dash AR and then the numbers for width and height separated by a colon. Here are some examples for reference. I've created a magical forest in four by seven aspect ratio and then seven by four. So you can see the difference. Tip 15, increase variety between images. The chaos parameter influences how varied the initial image grids are. You can use dash dash chaos followed by a number from zero to 100. The higher the number, the more unusual and varied the results will be. For example, I have a prompt with a smiley emoji with a chaos of 100. You can see how crazy and varied the images are. Tip 16, create repeating patterns. The tile parameter allows you to generate images that can be used in a repeating pattern. In my case, I need to add the model version 5 by adding V5 to the prompt followed by dash dash tile. You can see what the tile looks like in a pattern by dragging it to a pattern checker website like this one. I'll put a link to it in the description. As you can see with these flowers, it creates a pretty seamless pattern. Tip 17, generate more artistic results. Another parameter you should be aware of is the stylized parameter. Higher values will produce more artistic results and are less connected to the prompt. In my first example, I have an apple with a stylization value set to one. As you can see, the images are all quite similar. Now, if I increase the stylization value to 750, I get more varied results. You can play around with this and see what works for you. Tip 18, multi prompts. So hopefully now you should have some good idea about what information to include in a prompt. To take it a step further, you can have multiple concepts within a prompt. By adding a double colon, you can separate the concepts. So here in this example that they give you, you have a hot dog. By adding a double colon, hot and dog are considered separately. Now that it's separated, you can add weight to the separate concepts. So by adding a number after the double colon, you can assign relative importance to it. In this case, Hot is twice as important as dog. And as you can see, the dog is not only hot, it is on fire. Tip 19, adjust quality. You can use the quality parameter to control how much time is spent generating an image. A quality setting of one is the default setting, but you can generate images faster by using 0.25 and 0.5. So it uses a quarter for 0.25 or half for 0.5 of the GPU minutes. In version 1, 2, 3 and 5 of Midjourney, you can double the quality by using a setting of 2, but this takes twice as long. Tip 20. Use short prompts. Throughout this video, I've given you lots of ideas that you can include in your prompts. However, 
Longer prompts don't necessarily mean better images. Sometimes you can confuse mid-journey with multiple concepts. So one tip is just to start off with a few prompts with, with a few details in your prompts and then add to it and refine it until you get your desired results. Tip 21, hide images with a pro plan. This is a tip for pro plan members only. You should be aware that all images you produce via Midjourney are publicly visible on the Midjourney website. If you want to create images privately, you need the highest plan they provide, which is the pro plan, and then you need to use the command forward slash stealth to hide the images. If you create images in one of the newbie rooms, everyone can see it. If you create an image in your DMs, no one can see your DMs, but they can see the images on midjourney.com. Forward slash stealth is the only way to create fully hidden private images. So there you go. 21 mid-journey tips and tricks for beginners. If you found this video helpful, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.